Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to our, at our March 26th Sunday worship service. I'm Carol Lindsay, and I'm the worship leader this morning. Cheers. The Friday Morning Cafe reopens this Friday. Come and enjoy <laughs> breakfast. <laughs> the community store still could use some help on Monday morning at 9 o'clock for about an hour to help set up. On Tuesday mornings, Stan would like some company anywhere between 9 a.m. and 11.30 a.m. If you can help out for an hour or so, please contact Stan Nason or the church office. Just a reminder, if you ordered Easter flowers, please remember to turn in your payment. A garden tool wish list is on the display table in the narthex. Your extra gardening tools are needed for the Asbury Meditation Garden Project. And you can see the insert for details on how to donate. Well, it's there somewhere. And while we're talking about garden tools for the meditation garden, Today is the kickoff for phase one of a five-year plan to rejuvenate our lovely garden. The goal for this year will be to refresh the memorial flower bed and to work in the area around the covered bridge. We'll be coordinating with the scout from our troop who has chosen um, this as his eagle project to finish repairing and refurbishing the covered bridge. If you are interested in being part of phase one, Bill Klein has prepared a ladder uh, of giving for items that will be included in that area. Donations of any amount are welcomed and may also be designated in honor of or in memory of special persons in your life. Since spring is the best time of the year for the most, most new planting, a matching fund challenge of $500 has been offered. All donations received by May 1 qualify for that match. Stop by the Meditation Garden display in the narthex for flyers and, and envelopes to, or get further information from Bill. Next, Asbury will be hosting a blood drive on Wednesday, April 19th. And there's an in information in the insert to learn how to get scheduled for a time to donate blood. This is not just for our church. If you have friends, neighbors, um, we really need to have volunteers to get signed up in, to volunteer for this um, project. And we know that there's always a need for blood. Now, next hat. We are making Easter baskets for our stay-at-home members. We still have a few baskets available in the narthex, um, so if you would like to pick one up and, and take it home and fill it, I think they would like to have them back next Sunday, Palm Sunday, so that they have a whole week to distribute all of those um, in preparation for Easter. And we do have quite a few people who would, would be on that list for stay-at-homes and would really appreciate knowing how much our church family loves them. Next, our Easter egg hunt will be held next Sunday afternoon at 2 o'clock here in the Fellowship Hall. <laughs> Lots more individually wrapped candy is needed because it's not unusual for us to have three to 400 kids, and that takes a lot of candy. If you've never been here, it's a blast. They're hunting in shredded paper, so it's indoors, lots of fun. This will be Pastor Sherry's first round. There are bins in the narthex for, um, for the event, so you can put nowhere to put your candy. Now, here's the second part. This is four years, I believe, since we've done one, and many of the people who have been working with it in the past are maybe no longer in the area or not able to do it anymore. So volunteers are really needed desperately um, on Sunday afternoon after church to put the finishing touches on it, to help guide the kids through, and then kind of assist in the cleanup, which is not a big project because the parents all help because they know that any candy that they find, they get. 
So please, please, if you are willing to volunteer for this, talk to Terry Lee Birch, and she will be more than happy to put you to work. I'll take that hat off. Um, also, in the, in the narthex, please pick up an ARC from the table to support our heifer mission project. And we also have any additional Easter offerings that are received will go to support UMCOR. Checks should be made out to Asbury South United Methodist Church and received by Easter so that our gifts can be combined into a single check and sent on to be used where they are most needed around the world. April has been designated as UMCOR month by the United Methodist Church. So your help with that is appreciated. Um, the Monday morning Bible study has finished the study of Deborah. The new study is the book of Hebrews. Please feel free to join. All are encouraged also to come to Sunday school at nine o'clock, obviously on Sunday morning, except for the Mount Sinai class, which does meet at 830. And they're studying the prophet Habakkuk. All are also encouraged to join the dinner and Bible study on Sundays at 630. So those are wonderful opportunities for us to, especially during this Lenten time, to deepen our faith. Lastly, I think I got, I think I got them all, yes. Lastly, I want to share information with you about a new option which can make your giving more convenient. Jill has been working to drag me, kicking and screaming, into the 21st century. Because using cash or checks is rapidly becoming nearly obsolete, especially among the younger and more technology-oriented members of our society. Already, everyone can order and pay for flowers, memorial gifts, ties, and all the other types of donations with a credit card in the table in the narthex 15 minutes before the service or 15 minutes after it. Beginning next Sunday, you should find laminated cards with a QR code on them for giving in the pew racks. Jill has been working on those very diligently. Now, I don't know exactly what QR stands for. I said I'm still resisting too much, but Jill showed me how to use my cell phone to scan that special QR code. And amazingly, I will be taken directly to the site for where our, our website is, for where I can make donations for all kinds of things. We're working to have this option available for all of our church functions, such as Friday breakfast, Tuesday community lunch at the store, yard sales, everything that, that we are going to be doing to make it easier for you. There was an insert in last week's bulletin explaining all the new and old options that are available. If you need a new copy, there are some available in the narthex. If you have questions or need assistance in trying this option out, check with Jill or younger members of our congregation or probably your own children or grandchildren, just not me. And now, if you'll take a deep breath, and be ready to join our service. If you um, are able to stand, please do so and join the praise team in our call to worship.
let us pray. O oh God, you are the great God of comfort, the God of healing, and we come today before you with many joys, many concerns, many needs, and many distractions, if we're honest. We bring praises and gratitude, but we also bring brokenness, discouragement, confusion, and fear. We bring a desire for unity in a world that is divided and intolerant. We bring our flawed humanity to your very presence this God, O oh morning, and this morning, O oh God. And this morning, God, we invite your Holy Spirit to be free, to move as your Spirit wills to move, to do what your Spirit wishes to do, and to touch all of us who are present. May your spirit inspire us and illuminate our minds. May your spirit touch all who are present and inspire us, bring unity within us that the world cannot touch and take away from us. Today, may each of us receive the blessing you intend. May we be free to see what you plan to do, and may we receive it in the form that you give it. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Oh. I have a senior moment here. It's all good. <laughs> Better him than all that.
morning, church. Oh, thanks. I'm used to working with children of God who are a little younger than you folks. And, and when I was doing that, I decided, I was, as I was doing that, I was thought of introducing them to the apostles. And so I started reading about the apostles, and I got so involved in it. I have 21 pages of notes for Simon Peter, just to let you know. Um, he's mentioned 160 times in the New Testament. There are several that have never been mentioned even once, except to call their names. And uh, Jesus called him Peter, and because there was another Simon. And um, but every now and again, he would uh, call him Simon Peter when he was doing something he didn't think he should do. That was just like my parents saying Connie Stevens when I was doing something I shouldn't do. So I really tuned into that one. <clears throat> it was a popular name, and as I say, there, he's met, there are several of them in the New Testament. And um, his brother, his younger brother, Andrew, was uh, listening to John the Baptist out in the wilderness. And when he was there, Christ went by, and John the Baptist said, Behold, the Lamb of God. And so Andrew ran back and got his brother and brought his brother back so that he could meet the Christ. Thank you, Andrew. Did it. <clears throat> Some people, like I read, and John MacArthur said that Simon Peter was brash, undependable, and he promised to do things and never carried them through. So he had a lot of human traits, and he never apologized for those. He, he, and that was one of the things I, he didn't deny all those things. Uh, he was the only apostle that was married, and um, you may remember that Jesus asked Peter to let get in his boat and go out into the water so he, that he could be seen and the people could hear him. And when he was finished, um, Jesus said, oh, and that whole day, they had fished and couldn't find a single fish so that uh, Jesus said, well, put down your nets. And Simon Peter said, we did this all day and there are none here. And then Jesus looked at him and he said, okay, so he put the nets down. And you remember the story, there were so many fish that that broke the nets. And that's when Jesus, uh, uh, Simon Peter realized that Jesus was someone very, very special. He says, I'm a sinful man. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. And Jesus said, don't be afraid. You, I will now make you fishers of men. So that's the thing I'm going to remember, that once we know about God and all his love for us, it's up to us to let other people know too. So that's part of my prayer. So repeat after me. Heavenly Father, thank you for sending us Jesus so we know how much you love us. Help us share that love with all those around us. Amen. Our scripture this morning is from Romans chapter 8 verses 6 through 11. It's adapted from the New Living Translation of the Bible. So letting your sinful nature control your mind leads to death, but letting the Spirit control your mind leads to life and peace. For the sinful nature is always hostile to God. It never did obey God's laws, and it never will. That's why those who are still under the control of their sinful nature can never please God. But you are not controlled by your sinful nature. You are controlled by the Spirit, if you have the Spirit of God living in you. And remember that those who do not have the Spirit of God, of Christ, living in them, do not belong to Christ at all. And Christ lives within you. 
So even though your body will die because of sin, the spirit gives you life because you have been made right with God. The spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. And just as God raised Christ Jesus from the dead, God will give life to your mortal bodies by this same spirit living within you. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Oh God, may our minds, hearts, and spirits be open to the will and the work of your Holy Spirit among us today. May we feel your breath of life, of power, and of healing in our very bones. Where we are skeptical, remove all doubt. Where we are uncomfortable, embrace us. And where we are resistant, bring us to obedience. May each of us choose to freely receive the gift you have for us today. Amen. So today, I am not going to talk about life in the body as a sermon. But today is truly about the abundance of life to the human body. 
Maybe one day I'll preach that Roman sermon that I had in mind, but today is not that day. See, I've been praying for a while since I've been here, since shortly, actually, shortly after I arrived, actually. Um, and if you ask why, the reason is because of this. There is a lot of brokenness here at Asbury. Brokenness in all forms for a variety of reasons. There is emotional and physical brokenness, absolutely. But there's also the compatriots and byproducts of that spiritual brokenness, mental brokenness, social brokenness, economic brokenness. We live in difficult times, and this church has seen a lot of difficulty, not just because of COVID. And sometimes we need to pause and create space for God and God's spirit to come and address our brokenness. In my mind, we would have had an entire service just related to that. And I was going to preach all these sermons, and they were going to be great. That's what I told God, leading up to this. But that wasn't God's plan, and so we always will follow God's plan here. Pause for a second. I want to do start an introduction. For those of you who may not remember, TURN is a network, the ultimate resource network. It's a network of churches, individuals, nonprofits, and other resources within the 43232 and 43227 zip codes. And it's people and groups who have come together simply to pledge with God and one another to improve the social, economic, and spiritual conditions for every person that lives within those zip codes. So as a part of TURN, I met an, a pastor who I'd call an itinerant pastor um, that God brought to this region. And one of his gifts is the gift of healing. Now, we all have images, I think, that come to our minds when we talk about healing. But the power of healing is the power of God through the Holy Spirit touching and working within us. And all of us have some aspect of the gift of healing. But to some people, God has given a special harnessing of that power. And while some of us have no idea how the gift works, while some of us are intimidated by it, it is nevertheless one of God's gifts for us. I have been the recipient of different acts of healing, but it is a little bit beyond my expertise. So Brian is here to talk to us during the time that would have been my sermon, and to use our prayer time to lead us in prayer. During our time of prayer, during the entire service, the altar rail will be open. The front pew will be open. So if you would like an opportunity to be prayed for personally, that is going to continue while we do our offering, while we sing, while we leave the service. And, and Brian has been um, so gracious as to say he would stay following the service and pray for individuals who would like prayer. So Reverend Sarosa, will, and I hope I said that right. Close? I got it. Okay, good. Um, he's going to be speaking to us about uh, healing. And then again, if you would like to be prayed for, come up to the altar. Uh, one of the things I forgot to mention to you, Brian, is turn on your mic when you start to speak, and they will silence you from the booth when you're doing private prayer so that they won't be broadcast throughout the building. So uh, again, at the end of the service, if you haven't been prayed for and you'd like to be prayed for, just make yourself known, and, and Reverend Brian Sarosa will pray for you. So um, without further ado, I would invite Brian to come and address us with the gifts that God has given him. Let's welcome. <clears throat> that was a little loud. I've got a loud voice to begin with. So, okay, good. <laughs>
worship you, God. We're free to worship you, Lord. We honor you, God. We thank you for who you are and what you've done and will continue to do. For you're the same yesterday, today, and forever. First, I want to thank you, Pastor Sherry, for inviting me. I'm honored to be here in your presence, and I thank the Lord for giving me this opportunity to speak to you. You know, when I came in, um, I saw this. It says, welcome, enter to worship, and depart to serve. And I thought that was beautiful because here's the thing. The church is an equipping center. This is where we come as a body of Christ to learn who we are in Christ so that we, we can give the world who we are in Christ because the world outside is dying because it needs life. Can you agree? But the thing is about life is that life is not just what's flowing through our bodies. It's not the blood. It's not the thing that's causing us to have breath. Jesus himself is life. And if Jesus is life, then we can't give the world life unless we have Jesus, because that's what life is. And Jesus said that eternal life, he prayed to his Father in heaven. He said in John chapter 17, verse 3, he says, this is eternal life, that we might know you, the one true God and Jesus Christ, whom we have sent, whom you have sent. So life is Jesus, but eternal life is to know God. It's to be intimate with him. It's to be so intimate that it brings forth offspring. And offspring looks like many different things. It looks like disciples. It looks like fruit. It looks like testimonies. It looks like experiences. It looks like words that God has spoken to your heart. It looks like many things, and we as a people of God desire to know God. Am I right? Amen. We desire to know Him, not just know about Him, but to know Him, to know Him. I'm married. I'm married for 14 years, praise God, to a beautiful woman. Her name is Amber. And I, if I read her autobiography, I would just be knowing about her, and I could probably quote many things about her, but because I know her, because I live with her, because she lives with me, there is a knowing, and that has produced offspring, physical offspring, but it's the same way with God. God wants us to know him, and so in my desire to know God, I took him at his word because we believe the scriptures are his word. Do we not? Is the Word of God, is the Scriptures the Word of God inspired by the Holy Spirit, who is the author of the Scriptures, who had holy men of God write, who had holy, holy men of God move, uh, speak as they were moved by the Spirit? It's funny because here you, you have a verse here in, the, in today's reading, which by the way, this is beautiful. Everything that you guys have been doing is absolutely beautiful. The bells, that was like, oh my gosh, I've never seen that. That was gorgeous. And then when uh, the sister was up here and saying she had 21 pages of notes on Peter, I'm like, let's get in it. <laughs> but uh, I digress. <laughs> <clears throat> so it was beautiful. But your scripture that was for today, it says in verse 11 of Romans chapter 8, According to what you guys have quoted, it says, The Spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. How many of you believe that? How many of you believe that you are indeed born again of His Spirit? That His Spirit lives and abides and dwells in you? And if that is true, then let's see what else the verse says. It says, and just as God raised Christ from the dead. How many people believe that God raised Christ from the dead? You can't have the Spirit if you don't, know, if you don't believe that, right? You have to believe that God raised Him from the dead. 
And just as God raised Jesus Christ or Christ Jesus from the dead, God will give life to your spiritual body when we get to heaven. What does it say? It says mortal body. God will give life to your mortal bodies by this same spirit that you have all confessed that, you, that, you, that lives and abides and dwells in you. By this same spirit that lives in you. Do we believe this? We hear this and we say this, we say amen to it. We say, you know, praise God. We thank you, Lord, for these truths. But how many of us are experiencing that? Praise God. Amen. How many of us are taking God at his word? See, the thing is, is God is very simple in what he directs and what he speaks. His word is very simple. We have complicated it because we want to try to figure things out, but God's ways are past finding out, but he's given us clues. And one of those clues we read about here in Romans chapter 8 as well. Now, I'm going to quote a different version, but I'll read this version first. It says, For the sinful nature is hostile towards God. It never did obey God's laws, and it never will. Let me say it this way. I, the King James, which I like to read because it's just my bread and butter. I'm okay with different versions. It says that the, the, uh, it says the law of God is at enmity. Because the, no, excuse me. It says, because the carnal mind is at enmity against God. That's this natural thing. God has given us a mind to process things, has he not? Has he given us a mind to understand mathematics? Has he given us a mind to understand relationships? Has he given us a mind to understand things in the, in the natural? Yes, he has, and that's a blessing. However, there are limitations to it. The carnal mind is at enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God. So if you are trying to wrestle your natural mind to God's ways, you are going to fail miserably. We cannot measure things by, of the Spirit by natural means. We have to measure it by spiritual means. And the thing is, the simplicity that I was talking about is that God said it, and therefore it is. We have to become a people who, when we come across situations and circumstances that do not line up with the Word of God, we line up with the Word of God until that situation or person or circumstance lines up with the Word of God. We cannot be moved by circumstances and situations. We must be moved by God. And here's the other part of it. Because the carnal mind is at enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can it be. It's not created for that. It's not created to understand spiritual things. It's created to function in this natural realm, but we must have some other type of equipment that allows us to function and understand spiritual things, not in a, in a, in a mindset thing, not in a mind uh, way, but in a spiritual way. And that is his Holy Spirit. See, we have been given the mind of Christ. Why? So that way we can receive instruction from him. So when God tells us simply, go and lay hands on the sick because the sick will recover, as it does in, in Mark chapter 16, he doesn't give us the, he doesn't give the sickness an option. He says, believers will lay hands on the sick and the sick shall recover. How many of you believe that, that scripture? How many of you believe that scripture? How many of you believe that that's a reality? See, we have probably gone after these things. It's like, okay, God, this is what you say then I'm going to go after it, and we're going to see this thing happen. And then you go out, and you lay hands on the sick, or you pray for someone with expectation that something's going to happen, and then you have these thoughts in your mind that say, well, what if? 
What about this sin that I just committed? What about the fact that I'm just a sinful person? What if that person is not believing? What if, dot, dot, dot. But what if God's truth, God's word is true? And I don't have to understand it in order to believe it. Because as the scriptures has just revealed, the natural mind will not understand it. So we have to give up our right to understand it. And we just have to let God be God. And again, if the situation or the circumstance doesn't seem to line up, I'll tell you a testimony. I believe the word. And so I went out and I started praying for people. And it wasn't right away that I started seeing things. But my motive wasn't necessarily to see things. My motive was to love that person that I was coming across. Love, love. It's God's love that compels us and moves us to do what he's called us to do because he first loved us. And in response to that, we get to love him. Amen? So for the first few times, first couple times I laid hands on somebody, I didn't see it, but I didn't, it didn't matter because God's word said it and it is so. And so I continued and continued. Until finally one day, I was at, a, at my job that I used to work for where a guy came in who was a landscaper. I don't know how much time I have, so please forgive me. <clears throat> there was a landscaper who came in. He was walking with a, a walker and two boots. And I walked, and I saw him in the lobby, and I walked past him. And I went to the restroom, and I'm looking at myself in the mirror, all nervous, and uh, I heard in my heart, it's okay, Brian, if you don't pray for him, because you could pray for someone else. But when is it that he's going to be around somebody who knows who they are again? And so the Holy Spirit convicted me. Oh, okay. <laughs> the Holy Spirit convicted my heart in that moment. And so I walked out, and I said to this, to this gentleman, I said, what's going on? And he ends up telling me what's happening. And I said, can I pray for you? And in the middle of the lobby, in my workplace, in, in front of everybody who's there, I kneeled on the ground, and I placed my hands on his feet. I didn't, it didn't matter who was around me, because this man was the object of God's love, and he was the one that, that, that I was able to minister to and love in that moment. And so I put my hands on his feet, and I spoke to his feet the way that I believe God was directing and then he tells me that he also had some things going on with his shoulder. And I prayed for him as well with the shoulder. And I asked him to test it out afterwards. And so he tested it out. And lo and behold, he had some relief. He was so thankful because here he is walking with this walker, two boots and, and shoulder pain. And now he's got some relief and he can kind of go about his day to accomplish some things that he wanted to accomplish that he couldn't do before because he was in so much pain. And that was my, one of my first instances that I saw something that God did. And I rejoiced. And I was glad. And my heart was full. And it just brought me to this place of loving God even more and loving people even more. And so I continued. And to this day, I've seen cancer go fibromyalgia, lupus, diabetes. I've seen bones shift. I've seen metal melt. I've seen God heal, raise someone from the dead. I've seen all kinds of things that it's too late for me to deny that God's word is true, because it is. And so Pastor Sherry has invited me to share with you what God has been doing in my life, because God is no respecter of persons, and so if he will use me, he will use you. Now, I see that there are some of you here that are um, probably thinking, well, my time might be past, it might be too late for me. But your, your, own, your, your own donation envelope says, depart to serve. We also heard up here 
from our sister that we need to share who Jesus is with other people that we come across. So I want to share who Jesus is with me with those that I come across. And so I'm going to pray right now. I'm going to pray for someone's healing in this room. And I believe that God is going to do something because he is faithful. Okay? Are you guys okay with that? Yeah. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so, Debbie, I felt like God was telling me between last night and today to come and pray for you. Now, that's okay. You can keep the mic on because I want to show you how natural this is. So, without going into too much depth, what's giving you the most problems right now? Your legs. Your legs. Are they in pain? Yeah. On a scale from 1 to 10, what would you say your pain level is right now? Oh, no, two. two? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, Debbie, with your permission, may I put my hand on your shoulder? So I'm going to pray for you. Here's what I need you to do. And I always say this to Christians because I find it funny. But I need you to do two things. One is nothing. You don't even need to pray if you don't want to. In fact, I probably encourage it because if you're praying and I'm praying, you're pouring out in the Spirit, I'm pouring out in the Spirit, and when the Spirit's, you know, the, it kind of washes itself. So what I ask oftentimes, and I'm okay if somebody prays, but I'm going to ask you to just relax. And then I'm also going to ask you to be 100% honest with me. Can you do that for me afterwards? Because I'm going to have you tell me what's going on, okay? Now, you guys in the audience, you can pray. I have, a, I have no problem with that. You can, you can intercede for Deb. You can, is it okay if I call you Deb? Yeah. Okay. You can intercede for Deb. You can, you know, pray that God's will be done. That's okay. But I believe it is God's will because we just read that it's by His Spirit that makes alive our mortal body, which means the Spirit makes alive our mortal body, the one that we possess now. Ready? So, Father, I just thank you in Jesus' name for Deb. God, you love her so much. I bless her, Lord. I thank you for what you're doing in her life. And I thank you, God, that you have a great assignment for her. That she needs her body. She needs her mortal body to go about and continue being the love that she is. Because, Lord, we know that she is light. And in her is no darkness at all. Just like in you, God. There's no darkness at all because you live in her, you abide in her, you dwell in her. So in Jesus' name, I speak to your legs, I speak to your nerves, I speak to your muscles, I speak to your tendons, I speak to your bones. I just command it to be healed right now. Now, as I pray, I shut my mind off because I'm not, I'm not operating in the natural anymore. I've spoken what I believe God has desired for me to speak, and I don't think anymore. I just let Holy Spirit do what I believe he wants to do. But I will ask from time to time, are you experiencing anything, Deb? Are you feeling any kind of tingling or anything? Yeah. All right. Is that normal for you to feel tingling? Yeah. Okay, so that tingling is her body responding to the Holy Spirit. So, Deb, once that tingling subsides, please let me know. It stopped? Okay. So, Deb, by your own admission, you said you had a pain in your legs about a two. Now, two is not bad, I suppose, but any kind of pain and any kind of relief, I'm sure, would be much appreciated. Right? Okay. So, Deb, I'm going to ask you to, st to stand up. I can help. And I want you to be 100% honest with me. This is not a show. This is not, you know, this is God. This is glorifying the Father who said that his word is true because he cannot lie and he cannot confess and he cannot stand by any other word but his own. So, Deb, where's the pain? Can you take a couple steps for me? I'm here. I'll hold your hand.
Do you have any pain? No. Did you hear that? Can you say it again? No pain. Okay. Any discomfort? Very minor. Okay. Father, we just thank you. See, when someone has experienced something, I like to bless the Lord for what he has done. God, we thank you right now for what you've done, for taking the pain, even though it seems small, it was large to Deb because it's constant, taking the pain from a two and completely relieving her. So right, right now, God, I'm asking you to take all the rest of the discomfort and strengthen her bones, strengthen her muscles, Lord, in Jesus' name. wherever you want to go. <laughs> Take a couple steps with me again. Now, how does it feel since the first time I prayed? Not so, I still feel a little bit not weak. Weak, okay. I, I don't have any pain. Okay. So, Father, we thank you in Jesus' name. See, Jesus, he prayed, he put his hands on the guy that was blind twice. I'm not Jesus. I'm only a disciple, so I get 77 times. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> I always like to make that joke because I think it's funny. But, Father, we, I, do, I do pray, I, I, and I will continue to pray uh, until I believe that I'm starting to, pr to go into the flesh. Because we know in our flesh, there's no good thing, right? There's not, it's not going to work if I do it in the flesh. So I'm taking a posture of humility to come low, to lift you up, to honor what God is doing in her. Until I feel like I'm moving into the performance or whatever, then I'll stop. Or unless, until she tells me to stop too. That's another thing I'll, I'll do. But I do this everywhere I go, and I see God do these things all the time. What's your name? Carol? Carol. Right? Carol, I liked your hats before. Your, your hats were cute. I liked it. So, Carol, do you have any pain in your body? I don't have pain. I just have braces. You have braces? Yeah. Okay. So, but there's bra so braces, but there's no pain, no, no, no weakness. It's permanent. it's permanent, okay. But God's word abides forever. So we're going to pray for you right now. And so here's the thing. It's the spirit of God who Deb has as well. So it's not a, it's not a Brian thing. It's a spirit of God thing. So Deb, I'm going to ask you to pray for her, but I'm going to ask you to repeat after me. Okay. Now, I believe I'm an, I'm an equipper. I believe that I'm called to help the body to stand and be who she is so that way the world can see the light of Christ living and abiding and dwelling in us so that way it can become desirable to them. Amen? So that way we can get 3,000, 5,000 come to be born again in one day. How amazing would that be? All right, so just repeat after me, Carol, right? So, Father, thank you for Carol. You love her so much. God, we bless her, and we thank you for what you're doing in her life. Jesus, right now, in your name, I'm asking you to take every crooked way and make it straight. In Jesus' name, strength be restored. Weakness go now. Now, just relax. Don't even think anything, Deb. Are you still feeling that tingling? Yeah, I know you are. Carol, are you feeling the tingling? Okay. Not everybody does, and that's okay. Now, I'd just like to give a few moments just for God to do something. I know my time's probably up. but So, Carol, what I'm going to ask you to do, if you wouldn't mind, is just stand up. And take a couple steps and let us know how you feel. Not different yet. Not different yet. That's okay. That's okay. All right, Deb. Go ahead, Carol. Have a seat. I can't walk Deb all the way over here without walking her back, right? <laughs> I'm coming over. Sorry, excuse me. Sometimes when we're dealing with things for so long, our body, it, it reflects that familiarity of the ailment. So when we don't experience, so a lot of times, for instance, 
when I've prayed for someone and that they've had a brace or, or, or they've walked with a crutch for so long or what have you, our bodies kind of conform to that way and it just becomes so familiar to us that when we experience something from God, it's like nothing has changed until our mind can come, you know, until our, our body can conform to the fact that something is different. So, Carol, we just thank you in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in her life. Right now, body be healed in Jesus' name. Muscles be strengthened. Weakness go now. Everything that has caused this, I curse you and I command you to leave in Jesus' name. Now, some of you are probably thinking in your mind, you know, how can you just say it like that? Well, God tells us to speak to the mountain, and it will move. He doesn't tell us to speak to him about the mountain. He says, speak to the mountain, and that's what I'm doing. I'm speaking directly to the mountain with expectation because of God's love for Carol. Not because she's done anything good, not because she was cute with the hats, not because of anything like that. Not because of her service to the body and to the, to the church and to, the, to what, not, not because of any of that, but simply because of his love. Now, Carol, are you feeling any tingling? That's okay. Now, when I am quiet, I am checking in with God. I'm like, God, is there something you want to say? Is there something you want to do? And again, I'm checking to make sure that I'm doing this in faith, not in flesh, because that would be a miserable thing. And because I want to honor the house, I'm going to stop here. But if someone would like prayer, and please take me up on this. I'm begging you, if you would like prayer for healing or any kind of prayer, please come see me later. Because what if God does something? What if? All right? All right. Amen. Thank you, Carol. God bless you. Gunda, uh move us on and we're going to go on with the offering but brian is going to be up front and so as i said before his mic will be silenced so if you come and seek prayer at any time please come forward you don't have to wait till service is over he's available to pray but his mic will be off so the the prayer won't go through the building so if you want some privacy you will have it and we will continue with our service thank you brian god bless you without the breath of god we are dry bones and without the word of God, we are nothing but dust. With gratitude, let us offer our lives to the Lord of our life. The ushers may come forward to receive our morning offerings.
holy God, breath of life and source of hope, because you have blessed us abundantly, we now dedicate our offering to you. Please bless and multiply these material, spiritual, and service gifts that each person would receive the full benefit you intend for them. Please bless the faithfulness of those who give and please increase the faith of those who do not give until all of us trust you completely to provide everything we need. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we pray. Amen. Will you please remain standing if you are able and join in our closing hymn, number 420, Breathe on Me, Breath of Life. who creates, empowers, restores, and heals us, carry us forth into the week ahead, that we might, in unity, humility, enthusiasm, and power, go forth to love, go forth to serve, go forth and be the church. Amen. Amen.